Homeowners lost $1.5 trillion, trillion with a T since May. Unbelievable. Really, the question is, what does it mean for you and for myself? Uh, hi, I'm Scott Olmer, Little Pink House of America. Thanks for joining me here on Pink TV. Crazy st statistics. I've done this a very long time, 26 years full time. Losing $1.5 trillion in equity in such a short window of time is really staggering. Well, it's staggering. However, if you really backtrack, it makes a lot of sense. Nobody in the investor world would have thought when COVID hit the pandemic that it would become a seller's market, that prices would go crazy. They would go through the roof. And in fact, everybody thought it was going to be the opposite. Foreclosure tsunami was really the big buzz phrase. It was going to be this bloodbath of foreclosures and government stepped in, put a moratorium on, stopped evictions, foreclosures, all of that. And certainly that probably was some help to the market, uh, but it went crazy. So prices got uh, overinflated. 67% of all buyers who bought a property in the past 36 months, right at the outset of the pandemic, have some sort of buyer's remorse. Go figure. People are putting in offers above list price, waiving contingencies for inspections, going in it without even having an inspector look at the property. Uh, in many cases, not even seeing the property, but they had to get part of that or be part of that buying spree and get their slice of the American dream, they overpay or have some issues with the home, buyer's remorse happens. As values increased at a rapid pace, there's a strong argument that some of that equity was inflated. So is the 1.5 trillion in lost equity in part adjusting back to a normal or maybe a little bit of less of an inflated value? No question about it. However, the best thing is that it means deal opportunities for those in the investor world. So a couple of things that, that are of interest that I wanted to just kind of quickly share in this video. Uh, the uh, Fed has very aggressively raised rates. It's been insane. Uh, two, three quarter point raises in a back to back. Uh, it's like been a light switch in, in many cases and it's just frozen activity. Frozen is the wrong word. It's, it's slowed things down to a very, very cool temperature. People are still buying and selling, but it has drastically, drastically dropped. So the intended effect of raising rates so aggressively has worked. It's slowed things down. So having said that, it's put a lot of people in pickles. So builders, builder sentiment has been at a very, very uh, all-time low. Nine months consecutive, there's been a decline in builder sentiment and, and builder activity. Uh, builders are having more cancellations than they have in many, many years, pre-2008. A lot of people that went into a home today, put a contract on it, put a deposit down, nine months from construction, breaking ground to completion. In that nine month window, rates have gone crazy. Now they can't afford the payment. So the property that was their dream home, they've had to back out of in many cases because it's been a totally different payment they can't afford. In many cases, they don't even qualify for that higher payment. So we're seeing builders doing more quick sales and certainly the builder sentiment when it comes to a particular maybe entry level type homes, which is, uh, that's its own uh, uh, scenario. Entry level to people nowadays is several hundred thousand dollars in almost every market across the country. Entry level homes are very, very challenging for this reason because people are losing the ability to ultimately afford the payments. So uh, moratoriums were lifted at the beginning of this year, really at the end of last year. There were moratoriums on evictions, foreclosures. There were forbearances in place over the past 9, 10, 11, 12 months. Uh, you've seen those now get uh, unclogged through the system, which means those that were behind in payments were uh, working through a forbearance, which by the way, to me, a forbearance is setting someone up for failure. Very rarely have I seen those become successful when a bank is offering a forbearance. It's usually something that people uh, have a tough time getting out of. Not always, but we see that fairly often. So. Those have been lifted, which means the system is being unclogged and you're now seeing people that are falling behind in payments. So that is, again, a recipe for good opportunity for real estate investors. People behind in their payments are a prime candidate for one of our favorite strategies here. We call it the unicorn subject two. Subject two is a strategy where you are buying the property, you're taking legal title to a property, but you are leaving the mortgage that is in the borrower or the seller's name in place on the property. You're taking title to the property, you're buying it subject to that loan remaining on title. Uh, it's a lien on the property. So you own it now, the seller doesn't own it, but they're still responsible for the mortgage. And I've got a whole course on why people do that because that's always the question. Why would somebody ever do that? Great question. There are reasons and it's typically because there's a distressed situation. It's a tit for tat. I'm behind in my payments. If you will catch up my payments, save my credit, save me from a foreclosure, I in turn will give you the deed to the property. There's more behind it, much more behind it, but that's really the essence of subject twos. In the case as I film this video, there are more and more of those coming down the pipe. In fact, we're seeing them a lot more than we have in years and years and years. 
more and more subject to is coming to the forefront because people have little equity, no equity, behind in payments, again, recipe for opportunities. And so if I'm out there looking for deals and I don't have a lot of cash to put on the street, I'm looking for subject to people that are a few payments behind. Uh, in Florida, they issue notice of defaults, NODs, list pendants, pre-foreclosure. Uh, there are different uh, uh, phrases that basically say someone is behind in payments, banks getting ready to foreclose. Nobody wants to be foreclosed on. If you get foreclosed, you uh, obviously have, have, you lose your property, that foreclosure on your record for many years. It also just tanks your credit. So if, if you're getting in a foreclosure situation and you don't resolve it, not only do you have terrible credit and, and not able to borrow money on a property again for typically three or more years, but it hurts your credit when you go to buy a car or credit cards or anything. So foreclosures are something that people want to avoid. You can help them avoid that if you are going to be a subject to buyer by catching up their payments. And by the way, sometimes you, take your money out of pocket and catch up payments, but in most cases, the way I teach it, you're gonna use your new buyer's down payment to catch up the loan with the seller, so you have no money out of pocket. Again, I have a whole course on it, and it lays it all out, where to look and what to do, but as a whole, or maybe a high level uh, takeaway, that's really what a subject to is. More of those coming down the pipe, and ultimately, there is opportunities that are forthcoming. So, all of this means one thing for you, and I'll say three things, opportunity, opportunity and opportunity. It's a great time to get in real estate. Warren Buffett said that when everybody's running away from something, in this case, a stock with Warren Buffett, housing market, you should be running too. Savvy investors are building up their war chests of money. They're gonna be taking advantage of the deals in front of them. And again, we're seeing a lot of subject twos right now. That would be my best advice. Those would be great, great properties to target, people that are distressed typically financially, uh, and those that have no equity. You pay $500,000 for a home, you put 20% down, you now owe $400,000. Uh, ultimately, values drop significantly and you want to sell. You have a, a very, very high debt on the property. Whether you can get through the 20% difference or not is to be determined. If you have to sell, now you've got no equity. You don't want to take a check to closing and have to pay to get your mortgage satisfied. There are situations where we can step in and help take those payments over. So again, opportunities are out there. Uh, what's it mean for you? I would encourage you to get out there and shake the trees. You never know what's going to fall out. So anyway, 1.5 trillion, I've got to tell you, it's and counting. 1.5 trillion and counting because I don't think that we're done with the price drops. Some of those inflated prices are going to come back to earth here and a lot of sellers aren't going to like it, but I think they're starting to realize it is the reality. So uh, be looking. Opportunities are forthcoming. Uh, you ever want to work with us, there's easy ways to find us in the links here. Uh, but again, just want to share just a quick video in real time based on the opportunities that are in front of you. I'm Scott, Little Pink Houses, uh, Pink TV. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.